Your goal should be to live to be 100 in sound physical health. Today, the average lifespan in America is approaching 80, which means 50% of people will die above that and 50% of people will die below. Since you are smarter than the average, you're more knowledgeable, you're better informed, you're probably going to smash that average and live to be 90, 95, 100 years old. So set 100 as your goal and say to yourself, okay, I want to live to be 100 in great shape. What would I have to do? What kind of shape would I have to be in? What kind of life would I have to live physically in order to get there? So first of all, design your ideal body. If your ideal body was perfect, in other words, weight, fitness, tone, stretch, flexibility and everything, if your body was perfect, what would it look like? And make a list of all the things. Remember, when you were a child, your body was perfect. And if your body's not perfect now, it just means that maybe you've forgotten to do a few things or you've done a few things you shouldn't have done. So start off with a clear picture of your perfect body and recognize that that is possible for you. Now, the key to physical health has always been contained in the five word formula, eat less and exercise more. Eat less and exercise more. Every single person who studies the subject and now more and more people realize that the key to success is to eat less and exercise more and to exercise every day. So discipline yourself to exercise daily. The very best time, of course, is in the morning. If you get up in the morning and exercise immediately, even if it's just stretching or going for a walk or riding a life cycle or walking on a treadmill, it doesn't matter what it is. If you get up in the morning and exercise immediately, not only will your body continue to burn calories all day, not only will you be more alert because you'll have highly oxygenated blood flooding your brain first thing in the morning, but you'll develop the discipline of starting on something that you would normally not want to do and getting it done, getting it out of the way. The more times I read about wealthy people, successful people, top business people, it's amazing how many of them get up at five o'clock and work out for an hour. It's absolutely astonishing. Over and over again, you see their daily routine is they get up at five or 5.30 and they work out for an hour before they start planning and organizing their day. If you can discipline yourself to do that, it have an enormous impact on your life. Also, when you exercise first thing in the morning for 30 to 60 minutes, your brain releases endorphins which, as I said, make you happy. They make you feel exhilarated. They make you feel more creative, more positive. You'll feel more personable. You're more eager to get to work and so on. So morning exercise just starts you off in fantastic mental and physical condition. Now, to get rid of any extra weight that you might have, just eliminate the three white poisons. The three white poisons are anything that has flour in it, white flour, wheat flour, any kind of flour makes you overweight. It sticks to your gut, to your hips, and to your thighs. Eliminate sugar and any sugar products. Eliminate desserts. Eliminate donuts. Eliminate soft drinks. Don't eat things with sugar in it and eliminate salt. Don't put any salt on your food. There's plenty of salt in everything you do. I ran into a friend of mine recently who lost 20 pounds. I looked at him. He was just swaying. I mean, his, his suit jacket was swaying back and forth like a tent on a tent peg in the wind. I said, Geez, I said, you've lost a lot of weight. I said, how did you do it? He said, I tried everything. I exercised. He said, I walked. I tried everything. He said, I finally stopped eating anything white. I stopped eating flour, foods, sugar, and salt. He said, dropped 22 pounds in 60 days. Never came back. And I've had people tell me that all over the world. So if you can discipline yourself to only eat fruits, vegetables, and proteins, no pasta, no bread, no rolls, no cakes, no desserts, no Cokes, no colas, and no salt. If you can just do that, you'll see yourself losing weight from the first day. Some people will lose three or four pounds in the first week that they stop adding salt to anything. And then of course, drink lots of water. Drink eight glasses of water a day. And what that does is it washes all the impurities out of your system. Very simple process. Eat more salads. And here's a real kicker. Eat before 6 p.m. at night. Eat salad, eat light, and eat before 6 p.m. Everything you eat after 6 p.m., you accumulate. Everything you eat before 6 p.m. burns up before you go to bed. Don't eat within three hours of going to bed. Just eat a light or medium light at dinner, salad with a little bit of protein before 6 p.m. or at 6 p.m. And you'll be astonished the next morning you'll be thinner. It's absolutely remarkable. Two more things, by the way, with regard to health. First of all, get regular medical and dental checkups. People often don't go to the dentist or the doctor until they need to. I find that it's false economy. Especially if you're over 40, you should have a complete medical every single year. And you should have regular dental checkups at least twice a year. If you're in business of any kind, you should have four visits to the orthodontist 
to clean your teeth every single year so that your teeth are really clean. They found there's a direct relationship between gum health and the health of your whole body. So with regard to self-discipline, just remember the Michael Jordan motto, just do it. If you think it's a good idea, do it. Get on with it. Don't waste time. Don't make excuses. Now, the sixth discipline is the discipline of regular saving and investing. One of the greatest goals that we have in life is to be financially independent. One of the greatest worries we have in life is our bills and our debts. The greatest fear we have in life is poverty or ending up our life with no money. So the very act of starting to provide for yourself financially transforms your thinking about yourself and your life. It makes you a happy person. So set a goal of financial independence. Decide that by gum I'm going to become financially independent. And resolve to get out of debt and stay out of debt. I've worked with countless people who have become financially independent, starting from nothing. And one of the things that they had was an aversion to debt. They hated debt. They avoided debt. The only debt they would accept would maybe be debt on a mortgage on the house that they live in. Maybe debt on a car. But even then, they don't like debt. And other than that, they avoid debt like the plague. So to get out of debt and stay out of debt, you have to discipline yourself. Now, here's an interesting point, And I learned this from one of the smartest money managers I ever met. He said, when we're young, we associate money with pleasure. We get our first allowance and we go and we spend it on candy. And we think that when we have money, we go and we spend it on candy or things that make us feel good. Now, when we become adults, whenever we think of getting a lot of money, our first thought is spending it on something that makes us happy. If you go to a tourist resort where people are on vacation and having a good time, they're just lying street after street after street of knickknacks and gadgets and junk because people, when they're happy, associate going out and buying stuff. However, what this does is it keeps you broke all your life. So what you do, and this is what he told me, is you rewire yourself. You kind of pull out one wire and we plug it in and you say, instead of saying, I like spending money, you say, I like saving money. And you begin to think of how much you enjoy having money in the bank. How much you enjoy saving, how much you enjoy delayed gratification, how much you enjoy the idea of moving toward financial independence. And when you develop the habit of being happy about saving money, you start to find yourself more and more careful with your expenditures. Now, you know the rule for financial independence is to save 10, 15, 20 percent of your income throughout your life. And as your income grows, keep saving more and more and investing it, putting it away. As Albert Einstein said, compound interest is the most powerful force in the universe. So putting your money away in well-chosen mutual funds, money market funds, index funds, and just letting it grow over time. And don't worry about the stock market going up and down. The average increase in the U.S. stock market for the last 100 years has been 8 to 10 percent each year, taking good years and bad years into consideration. So your job is to save 10, 15, 20 percent of your income. Now, for most people, because they're in debt, they just discard that completely their mind shuts down so here's what I say is develop the habit of saving one percent of your income if you make two thousand dollars a month that means you save twenty dollars you go down to the bank and you open up a financial freedom account and you put in twenty dollars from the first paycheck you get that month and then you discipline yourself to live on the other ninety nine percent once you're comfortable living on ninety nine percent then you increase it to two percent and three percent and four percent Within a year, you'll have developed the habit of living on 85 to 90 percent of your income and automatically saving the balance. You can even have the amount deducted from your paycheck so it disappears and you never see it. Your paycheck goes into the bank and the amount is automatically deducted into your savings account or into an investment account. Soon, you develop the habit of living on less than you earn. And you change your thinking from I enjoy spending to I enjoy saving. A key way to save your money is to delay and to defer major purchase decisions. You'll find that if you think about buying a car or a washing machine or a stereo set or a new computer, if you think about it for 30 days, in many cases you won't do it at all, or if you do do it, you'll make a better decision. One of the smartest things of all is to buy things that are used rather than things that are new. Do you know that millionaires never buy new cars? Millionaires never buy new cars. According to the studies by Stanley and Danko in The Millionaire Next Door, is they wait and they buy a car that's two years old. It's coming off lease or that's been driven for two years and somebody's trading it in and it's still under warranty for three years. And you can even get extended warranties on many cars where they'll go back and clean it all up and give you another five years on a two-year-old car. But what have you done? You save ten or twenty thousand dollars on a car and what do you do with that money? You put it away and let it grow 
with compound interest. If all you did was buy a used car every five to eight years, drive it until it falls apart, and then buy another one, the money you'd save from buying new cars can make you rich. It can accumulate with compound interest into hundreds of thousands of dollars by the end of your working lifetime. If you're going to invest, the rule is investigate before you invest. My friend Ken Fisher of Fisher Investment says that two-thirds of all investing is avoiding making mistakes. Let me repeat that. Two-thirds of all success in investing or business is avoiding making mistakes by making the wrong decisions or by making decisions too quickly. So if you're going to invest in anything, the rule is spend as much time investigating the investment as you spent making the money. You'll find that quick investment decisions are invariably poor investment decisions. Only invest in things that you know and understand. Don't invest in somebody else's idea or scheme or business. Only invest in things that you know. Number one rule is don't lose money. Whatever you do, don't lose money. If there's a possibility of losing a little bit of money and you do it, you're probably going to lose a lot. So be very careful. Once you earn the money, hold on to it. There's a Japanese proverb that says, making money is like digging in the sand with a pin. Losing money is like pouring water on the sand. It's easy to lose money, but it's hard to make it and keep it, and it's the most important discipline of all. Another discipline is to pay cash as often as possible and for as much as possible. Get rid of all your credit cards except for one and only use that one when you have to. The very act of paying cash really hypersensitizes you to how much it's costing and causes you to spend less money. W. Clement Stone once said, if you cannot save money, the seeds of greatness are not in you. The primary reason why you save your money and accumulate it carefully is because it gives you two things. First of all, it gives you freedom. You know you've got money in the bank. If you don't like your job, you can walk away from it because you've got money in the bank. But the second thing it gives you is opportunity. If an opportunity comes along, you're prepared to take advantage of it. You don't have to say, I'm sorry, I don't have any money, I can't afford it, I'm broke. And people just shake their head in pity and walk away. As an adult, you should always have opportunity money put aside. And when you have it, you feel great about yourself. The difference between a person with a little money and a person with no money is night and day. A person with a little money feels great. A person with no money always feels inferior, anxious, worried, concerned, irritable, short-tempered. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, the seventh discipline is the discipline of hard work. There's nothing that will help you more than for you to develop a reputation as a hard worker. In the studies of self-made millionaires, again, they said, I didn't have better education, better talent, better knowledge, but I was willing to work harder than anyone else. Most self-made millionaires work 60 and 70 hours per week for 5, 10, 15 years before they break through. Most other people are trying to get by on five days a week, and then during those five days a week, they don't work very hard at all. The interesting thing, Thomas Jefferson once said, do you believe in luck? He was asked. He said, yes. He said, I believe in luck. He said, and the harder I work, the more of it I have. So the harder you work, the luckier you get. The harder you work, the more opportunities you have, the more doors open up to you, the more opportunities you see. So in America, the average work week is 32 hours. As you know, in France, legally, the average work week is 35 hours, but then most people waste about half their time at work. According to Robert Half International, the average person wastes 50% of their time in idle chit-chat with coworkers, coffee breaks, lunches, reading the paper, surfing the internet, doing all kinds of things that don't contribute anything to the work. So here's the rule that will make you successful, happy, and rich, and it's this. Work all the time you work. Work all the time you work. When you go to work, work. When you go to work, put your head down and go to work. Don't waste a single minute. Put your head down and work all day long. If somebody comes up to you and says, hi, how are you doing? You say, fine, but right now I've got to get back to work, back to work, back to work. If you've got a minute to chat, yes, but not now. Let's talk after work. Right now I've got to get my job done. And nobody will ever stop you when you say, I've got to get back to work. I've got a job. I've got to get out. I've got something I have to get done. They'll go away and they'll ruin someone else's career. 
Remember, the greatest time wasters in the world of work are other people who take up your time with idle chit-chat and worthless gossip. You've got to avoid the time wasters. In every single company, these people go around and they're like a virus. They go around and they infect everybody they talk to. Stay away from time wasters. Now, here's a way to double your productivity, performance, output, and income. Here's a way to put yourself on the fast track, increase your income, and become one of the most valuable people in your industry. It's very simple. Start one hour earlier. And when you start, get to work. If the starting time in your company is 8.30, start at 7.30 or 7. Now you say, where are you going to get the time? Get up a little earlier and get going. Remember, all you do is beat the traffic if you get in there early and get in there, plan your day, get going, get organized, get started. When other people come in, you are already running. You're already on your way. Work through lunch. There's no law that says you have to go out and kill an hour, an hour and a half at lunch. Eat at your desk, eat quickly, eat on the go. Use that time to work. Don't use that time to hang around. There's a thing sweeping America today about having fun at work. No, work is not fun time. Work is not the playpen or the sandbox. Work is not school. Work is work. What you do is you go to work and you work all the time. Don't worry about fun. Have your fun later knowing that you've done a fantastic job and you've gotten a lot done. And finally, work one hour later. Be the last one to leave. Be the person who turns off the lights. Interesting, if you look at an entrepreneurial startup, a business that's being run by somebody who's really driving it forward, you'll find that the business owner is usually the first one there, works through the whole day, usually the last one to leave. Business owner usually works on Saturday and Sunday. At the end of the day, the business owner's got a beautiful home, house on the hill, beautiful cars, beautiful life, vacations, a boat in the yacht basin, and everybody says, boy, she is sure lucky. No, they're not lucky. They just worked all the time they work. If you work three extra hours, start earlier, work harder, stay later, you'll add six hours of productive work to your day. Every hour of uninterrupted work when nobody's there translates into three hours of productivity when there's people around interrupting you. So keep asking at work, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? What is the most valuable use of my time right now? And then do only that. And keep saying, back to work. Back to work. Whenever you get distracted or you start to follow the path of least resistance and major in minor, say, wait a minute, I've got to get back to work, back to work, back to work. Now, the eighth discipline is the discipline of continuous learning. The rule is to earn more, you must learn more. If you want to earn more than you're earning today, you've got to learn new knowledge and skills that make it possible. Jim Rohn once said, very famously, he said, work at least as hard on yourself as you do on your work. Work at least as hard on yourself as you do on your work. So how do you do this? Well, you read in your field daily. If you read 60 minutes a day in your field, a little in the morning, a little in the evening, it'll translate into one book a week. One book a week will translate into 50 books a year. The average adult reads less than one book a year. And most nonfiction books are never read past the first chapter. If you read 50 books a year, it's the equivalent of getting a PhD in your field every single year. Just reading every day will make you one of the most proficient, most skilled, and ultimately highest paid people in your field. Listen to CDs in your car, like this. The average person drives 500 to 1,000 hours a year. That's the equivalent of three to six months, a 40 hour week. That's the equivalent of one to two full-time university semesters. Just listening to educational CDs in your car will make you one of the best informed people in your field. And finally, in continuous learning, attend seminars, take courses, take structured courses given by experts, given by authorities. You can learn more in a half day or a day from an expert than you might learn on your own in years. I've had many people walk out of my courses with one new idea and increase their income five times within 30 days. One new technique for getting new clients, prospecting. One new technique for presenting or overcoming objections. One new technique for closing sales or getting referrals and their income has exploded. They'd have never learned it. They call me, they come to me, they say it was incredible. It changed my life, that one idea. Now, the average income in America increases about 3% a year. With additional knowledge and skill, you increase the rate at which your income goes up. If you get new knowledge and skill, you learn more, your income goes up 10% per annum, you'll double your income in 7.2 years. If your income goes up 25% per year, you'll double your income in two years and eight months. In other words, the more you learn, the more you earn. The benefits of continuous learning are life-changing. And here's the final discipline, number nine, the discipline of persistence. 
Now, the discipline of persistence says that the greatest test of self-discipline is when you persist in the face of adversity and you drive yourself forward to complete your tasks 100%. The test of self-discipline is when you can drive yourself to keep on keeping on even when everyone around you feels like quitting and you feel like quitting as well. You know, we say that courage has two parts. The first part of courage is the courage to begin. It's the courage to start. It's the courage to launch in the face of failure with no guarantees of success. But the second part of courage is the courage to endure, the courage to persist and to keep on going when you're tired and you're disappointed and nothing's working and there's no guarantee of success and maybe even a very large likelihood of failure. So it's really important. We say that your persistence is your measure of your belief in yourself and what you are doing. If you truly believe in the goodness and rightness and value of what you're doing, you will persist regardless of what's happening on the outside. And the more you believe in the goodness and rightness of what you're doing, the more you will persist. And wonderfully enough, the more you persist, the more you believe in yourself, the more you believe in the value of your work. Persistence seems to change your character. In reality, persistence is self-discipline in action. In the final analysis, your persistence is your measure of self-discipline. Self-discipline leads to self-esteem. Every time you practice self-esteem, you feel better about yourself, which leads to greater persistence, which leads to even greater self-discipline, and you get onto an upward spiral in life. That's why Napoleon Hill said that persistence is to the character of a man or woman as carbon is to steel. You actually make yourself, you shape yourself, you form yourself, you build yourself into a superior human being, a better and stronger person by persisting when you feel like quitting. Well, every time you have the tendency to quit, every time you feel like giving up or cutting corners or stopping before you finished your task, say, wait a minute, this is a test. This is a test of my character. This is a test to see what I'm made of. And it's not what I'm working on that counts. It's the person I am becoming by either persisting or quitting. So always persist until you have completed the task. And as you do, you burst through and your brain floods with endorphins and you feel wonderful about yourself. Eventually, you develop a habit of persistence and you become unstoppable. Well, here are the seven benefits of practicing self-discipline in every area of your life. Number one, the habit of self-discipline guarantees your success. Every single successful person has that fundamental quality of persistence and tenacity, that fundamental quality of self-discipline to make themselves do what they should do, whether they feel like it or not. Number two is when you practice self-discipline, you'll get more done faster and better than other people. You'll get more results. You'll be more productive. You'll have higher levels of performance. You'll bring yourself to the attention of people who can help you and support you and move you forward. Number three, you'll be paid more and promoted faster at any job, in any situation. The people with high levels of self-discipline who get the results are the ones who are immediately moved to the front of the line of life. Number four, you'll have a greater sense of self-control, self-reliance, personal power. You'll feel that you could do anything that you put your mind to because you have the ability to make yourself to discipline yourself to do it anyway. Number five, self-discipline is the key to self-esteem, self-respect, and personal pride. Every time you discipline yourself, you'll like yourself more. Every time you discipline yourself, you see yourself as a better person. Every time you discipline yourself, you feel great about yourself. You feel personally proud of yourself. It affects your personality in a very positive way. Number six, the greater your self-discipline, the greater your self-confidence, and the lower your fears of failure and rejection. Eventually, you develop self-confidence so that you can just walk through walls. Napoleon Hill once wrote, Do not wait. The time will never be just right. Start where you stand and work with whatever tools you may have at your command, and better tools will be found as you go along. Perhaps the most outwardly identifiable quality of a high-performing man or woman, as I mentioned earlier, is action orientation. Highly productive people take the time to think, plan, and set priorities. They then launch quickly and strongly toward their goals and objectives. They work steadily, smoothly, and continuously, and seem to go through enormous amounts of work in the same time period that the average person spends socializing, wasting time, and working on low-value activities.
When you work on high value tasks at a high and continuous level of activity, you can actually enter into an amazing mental state called flow. Almost everyone has experienced this at some time. Really successful people are those who get themselves into this state far more often than the average. In the state of flow, which is the highest human state of performance and productivity, something almost miraculous happens to your mind and emotions. You feel elated and clear. Everything you do seems effortless and accurate. You feel happy and energized. You experience a tremendous sense of calm and personal effectiveness. In the state of flow, identified and talked about over the centuries, you actually function on a higher plane of clarity, creativity, and competence. You are more sensitive and aware. Your insight and intuition function with incredible precision. You see the interconnectedness of people and circumstances around you. You often come up with brilliant ideas and insights that enable you to move ahead even more rapidly. One of the ways that you can trigger this state of flow is by developing a sense of urgency. This is an inner drive and desire to get on with the job quickly and get it done fast. This inner drive is an impatience that motivates you to get going and to keep going. A sense of urgency feels very much like racing against yourself. With this ingrained sense of urgency, you develop a bias for action. You take action rather than talking continually about what you are going to do. You focus on specific steps you can take immediately. You concentrate on the things you can do right now to get the results you want and achieve the goals you desire. A fast tempo seems to go hand in hand with all great success. Developing this tempo requires that you start moving and keep moving at a steady rate. When you become an action-oriented person, you activate what is called the momentum principle of success. This principle says that although it may take tremendous amounts of energy to overcome inertia and get going initially, it then takes far less energy to keep going. The good news is that the faster you move, the more energy you have. The faster you move, the more you get done and the more effective you feel. The faster you move, the more experience you get and the more you learn. The faster you move, the more competent and capable you become at your work. A sense of urgency shifts you automatically onto the fast track in your career. The faster you work and the more you get done, the higher will be your levels of self-esteem, self-respect, and personal pride.